Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so this next day of limits is actually a little bit more of the same from the previous day. So in day three, what we did is we talked about um, doing some factoring, right, to simplify an expression so you're able to do direct substitution. Well, we're going to do a little bit more of that, and then we're going to do um, a couple other different types of problems where you're going to be able to do direct substitution. But you have to manipulate the expression first before you can do the direct substitution. Otherwise, you're going to plug in a value, it's going to give you something undefined, and then you're going to be sad and cry because it's not going to work. Okay, so this is um, finding limits using algebraic uh, manipulation. Okay, so let's just kind of review a little bit because this is kind of a review problem. Limit as x approaches negative 3 of x squared minus 2x minus 15 over x squared plus 7x plus 12. Now, the very first thing you're going to do with this problem is, uh, actually, I think the first thing I would do is I would see if I can actually substitute, especially the bottom, right? If I can substitute something in the bottom, and it doesn't give me zero, I'm good to go. I don't have to do anything. So if I just put, just to check it out here, negative 3 squared is 9, uh, 7 times negative 3 minus 21 plus 12, so I can actually see that's equal to zero. So I have to do something to simplify this before I can do any kind of direct substitution. So we're going to factor, and hopefully that works. If it doesn't work, then we got to figure something else out. We can't actually do it using... Uh, uh, algebra then. So I factor the top and I get x minus 5 and x plus 3. And the bottom gives me x plus 4 and x plus 3. Pretty sweet, math fans. So you get limited as x approaches negative 3 of x minus 5 over x plus 4. Now I can do direct substitution. So negative 3 minus 5 over negative 3 plus 4. So I get negative 8 over 1, which is negative 8. And that's my answer. So remember, I crossed this off, this was a whole. But as I said many, many times, limits don't matter uh, when you are approaching a whole, because you're never going to get to the whole. You're never going to fall in that hole. Okay? So our goal for all these problems, if you have a friend named Al, then you'd say, go Al. Our goal is to eliminate the zero in the denominator. That's our goal, okay? Always, it, it basically, here's the deal, math fans. Most of the functions I'm going to give you um, may look undefined because you're going to be like, oh, wow, I, I can't plug that value in. But you got to manipulate it. you got to rewrite it and somehow simplify it where you can plug it in. Because what you don't want to say, in fact, you'll never even see this, limit, if I said limit as x approaches whatever, okay, of some function, it'll never be undefined. We never use undefined with limits. Okay, they can we can say they don't exist, and that's only if the left side doesn't equal the right side, then it doesn't exist. But a limit is never undefined. You'll never say that. Okay, and um, you know so that's why again if you're given a problem, don't write don't look and go oh geez oh it's undefined if I plug a zero. We're not truly plugging a value in. You're simplifying it first where there's maybe a hole. And then you can plug a value in uh, and get an answer. Okay? All right, so let's do a couple different types of problems here. Um, in fact, I have uh, five different problems, four different problems. Limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x plus 7 minus 1 seventh over x. Brutal! Brutal! First of all, I know I can't do this problem just by plugging it in because right away I see I got a zero on the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do here, math fans, is we're going to eliminate the complex fraction. That's actually really really important. So that means I'm going to multiply it by the common denominator, which is seven times x plus seven. So seven times x plus seven, and of course, what you do to the top. Got to do the bottom. 
Okay, so we've done this many times before. But if I multiply the first term, uh, the x plus 7's cancel out, and I just get 7. And then minus, and then multiply the next term, it's the 7's cancel out, and I get x plus 7. On the bottom, I'm going to get um, 7x. Guys, don't distribute. If you actually distribute, you're going to make it much more difficult. You're going to have to factor that anyway. You never, never, never distribute on the bottom. Because our goal, math fans, is to get this to cancel. That's our goal. Because right now I can't plug a zero into it. Because if I get a plug a zero in, the whole thing goes to zero and then it's undefined. Okay, so our goal is to get that to cancel. So we can see what we're going to have here on top. Um, 7 minus x minus 7 over 7x, x plus 7. And notice I keep writing limit. And I probably should stress that a little bit here too, math fans. You don't actually stop writing limit until you're actually done with the problem, until you're actually doing the substitution. So you can see the 7s cancel out, which actually is pretty sweet. Because then I can cancel those out. And now I don't have, a truly I have limit as x approaches 0 of negative 1 over 7x plus 7. Now I can plug a 0 in because I don't have a 0, won't give me a 0 in the denominator. So it's negative 1 over 7 times 0 plus 7 or negative 1 over 49. And that's my answer to this problem. Okay, so if I actually would type that in my graphing calculator and um, I would, uh, you know, graph it and then I would look and type values in, of, you know, of you know, point uh, zero, 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 0001, I get really, really close to 0. Now, if I type in 0, I get undefined, but I can see what's going on. If I type in numbers really, really close to 0 from the left side and the right side, so negative point zero, 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 0001 and positive point zero, zero, 0001, um, I would get really, 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 really close to negative 1 over 49. Okay? So that's one kind of problem with the fractions. Make sure you know how to do that. You're going to see these again. All right, let's do another one here now. Uh, limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of x plus 6 minus the square root of 6 over x. Well, what do you think, guys? I mean, not that you're going to answer because I'm making this video and you really can't answer my video, but what do you think you do just because I have square root of x plus 6 and negative square root of 6? Well, the deal is the only way to, to manipulate anything here is to multiply by it's conjugate. Okay? So this is the conjugate. Which is going to be the square root of x plus 6 plus square root of 6. Again, what you do to the top, you got to do to the bottom. Okay? So that gives me limit as x approaches 0. Again, I'm writing the limit. So if I do FOIL for the top, right, I, basically the, uh, the OI cancels and the first and the last stay there. But square root of six, x plus 6 times square root of x plus 6 is just x plus 6. Outside, inside cancel. And then it's minus 6. You can see what right away what's going to happen here is I'm going to have just an x on top. Now, just as I said before, math fans, do not distribute the x. All right? That's really bad. Okay, so that's what you get, right, for the bottom. And then that's limited as x approaches 0. Um, they cancel, and we just get x over x. And you're saying, Mr. Kerfus, why are you showing so many steps here? Well, you know what? When you're taking the AP exam and you don't show steps, they're going to look for certain steps, and if you don't show them, you're going to lose points. The answer to the problem is worth one point, and all the work behind it is worth nine points. Ten-point problem, and you got to show work. Okay. Anyway, uh, these cancel, and I just get a 1. And so now I can do direct substitution. So I have 1 over the square root of 0 plus 6 plus square root of 6. So it's 1 over square root of 6 plus square root of 6. Please don't tell me square root of 12. That's brutal. Okay, 2 square root of 6, because there are two of them. And then I rationalize, and I get root 6 over 12. And that's the answer to that problem. Okay, not bad, not bad. So again, make sure you know how to do, um, you know, this type of problem as well. Uh, again, I'm going to stress here: do not distribute. So never 
distribute in the denominator. Because um, you got to cancel, these have to cancel anyway, so you wouldn't want to distribute. The top you have to, okay, but the bottom you don't. All right, uh, here's another one. Limit as x approaches 0 of x minus 5 squared minus 25 over x. Well, once again, can't plug in a, a 0 in for x because it would be undefined, and we can't have that. So um, we're going to distribute the top. So limit x approaches 0. If I FOIL the top, I get x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus 25. Hmm, interesting, over x. OK, so the 25s cancel, and I then I can factor an x out of the top, which is what we want. So that'll cancel with that x there. So you get limit as x approaches 0 of x times x minus 10 over x. All right, these cancel, and now I can plug a 0 into there. So 0 minus 10 is negative 10. OK? All right, last one here. It's a pretty short lesson. Limit as x approaches 0 of x squared plus 4x minus 21 over x squared minus 3x minus 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor that guy, see what we can do. Limit as x approaches 0. If I factor the top, I get x plus 7 and x minus 3. And on the bottom, I get x minus 4 and x plus 1. What? Nothing cancels. Oh, man, what, what do we do? Well, here's the deal, math fans. We didn't even have to worry about that anyway. Because think about it. Remember I told you? Only if that goes to 0, the denominator, do we even have to worry about anything. If I put a 0 into the for x for that denominator, I get 0 squared minus 3 times 0, negative 4. I get negative 4 on the bottom. So actually, I didn't even have to worry about factoring if it works out, if you can do direct substitution. So I can put negative 4 is the bottom. If I put a 0 in for the top, um, oops, these two guys cancel, and I just get negative 21, right? You guys agree? Everything cancels when you put a 0 in there. You get negative 21 over 4, which comes out to be 21 fourths. And that's your final answer. OK? So look to see if you can plug it in right away. I mean, if you can, then do it. If you can't, then you got to do a little bit of work. OK? So I showed you basically three kinds of problems. Um, we learned one yesterday with the factoring, which I started out with less than today. But one with a fraction, one with a radical, and one where you have to multiply it out and then um, and then you factor, and then it cancels out, and you're able to do direct substitution. Okay? Uh, but again, always look to see if you can do direct substitution without having to do any kind of manipulation. All right? That's it, math fans. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.